Hey everybody, Suze here. Welcome back to another Keto Dinner Ideas video. This week we threw together four super easy keto meals and I hope it'll give you some inspiration and motivation to get in the kitchen and get your own keto cooking going. If you're not already a member of the crew, please hit that subscribe button. It's free and we love it when you subscribe to our channel. Let's get into the video. I wanna catch the First up in our keto meals this week, we adapted the Keto Green Chili Chicken Skillet from Cast Iron Keto, linked down below. So to start with in a large skillet over medium high heat, I'm adding a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Then I'm taking about a pound to a pound and a half of chicken breast. This is just two large chicken breast. I opted to cut mine up so that they would cook quickly. And I'm just adding those to our pan and spreading them out in an even layer. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a half a teaspoon onion powder, a half a teaspoon garlic powder, quarter of a teaspoon sea salt, and a quarter of a teaspoon ground black pepper right on top of our chicken. And then go ahead and toss it about and let it start cooking all the way through. And this is mixing those seasonings in over all of our chicken. Probably let it cook about 10 minutes until it was mostly cooked through. Once it was, I'm making space right in the middle of our skillet and adding in half a cup of thin sliced regular white onion and breaking those apart a little with my spoon. I'm gonna add some green chilies to this. I'm just using these mild ones, two four ounce cans. That's the type that I'm using. Putting those right on top of our onions and by the time we have this in, our onions have started to soften up a little bit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start mixing everything in together and letting it cook for a few more minutes. Turning down the heat to medium, I'm adding in four ounces of cream cheese and just breaking it apart with my spoon. Stirring that in until it's nice and creamy and melted. And once it is, we're gonna top this with a little cheese. So I have here a cup of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. I know some of you can't get your hands on Monterey Jack. You could use a Gouda or a white cheddar. Even a mozzarella would be great with this recipe. Once I have my cheese on, turning the heat off, putting the lid on for about five minutes to let it melt. Meanwhile, I steam some cauliflower rice in the microwave. Here's what it looks like after the cheese is melted. If you have some fresh cilantro, you could go ahead and throw that on top. I didn't have any on hand, so here it is plated up with a little bit of dried cilantro sprinkled on top. Easy, excellent meal to throw together for a super simple keto weeknight meal. Next up, these tuna melts pretty much followed their recipe from badtuber.com. I'll link it down below. So to start with in a medium mixing bowl, I'm just adding, I think this is a five ounce can, four and a half, five ounces of just white tuna and spring water, drained it, used the fork to kind of flake that apart, adding in a fourth of a cup avocado oil mayo, a fourth of a cup sour cream, two large eggs, and just using my fork to break that apart a little bit before adding in one teaspoon of finely chopped fresh parsley. If you don't have that, you could totally leave it out. I'm sure it'll be fine. Put in a teaspoon of sea salt, and then we're just mixing that all together. I am still using a fork to mix it because I find it just breaks the tuna fish apart easier. Once it's all mixed together and smooth, I'm going to incorporate just kind of almost fold in a cup and a half of extra sharp shredded cheddar cheese. And then I am taking a silicone muffin pan and spraying it with a little olive oil cooking spray. I like to sit it on top of a regular cooking sheet so that it gives it a little stability. And then I'm just evenly dividing the mixture between the cavities of the muffin pan. And I think I have this link down below. It's an extra deep one. Popping this whole thing into a 350 degree oven for 25 minutes. Here's what they look like when they come out. Here it is plated up. This is the most simple and budget friendly keto meal that we probably made this week. Just steamed a little broccoli in their microwave and put that along with it. Uh, these taste just like the tuna casserole my mom used to make when I was a kid. Next up, I just threw together a garlic wasabi ribeye and some sauteed zucchini. So to start with in a small bowl, I'm going to add some prepared wasabi. And wasabi is higher carb. It's like three grams of carbs for a teaspoon of this specific one. But we're only gonna use about a half a teaspoon of that. I split between two steaks with not a lot of other carbs in the meal, so it'll be fine. To that, I'm adding two teaspoons of minced garlic, and most of that's gonna get left on our pan while we're cooking. We're not even gonna eat. And then I'm pouring in about 
a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil and just using my spoon to mix this together really well. Next, I'm taking a broiling pan and adding two boneless ribeyes to it. I usually cook probably bigger, thicker steaks, so I really overcooked these for what I wanted, but uh, this is what was on sale on special this week. Seasoning it with sea salt and fresh ground black pepper, kind of patting that in before flipping them over and doing the same thing to the other side. And I do like to let my steaks come up to room temperature before I pop them in the broiler, which is at 525 degrees. Always cook it with the door cracked open. And I did these for eight minutes on each side. I should have done probably about six minutes on each side to get more to the temperature that I like depending on the thickness of your steak and the temperature you like it, cook them however long that takes for you. So while they are in the broiler for their first go around on the first side, I am gonna move over to the stove top and start working on my zucchini. And I have here just two medium, small to medium zucchini that I just sliced in the half moons and taking a saute pan. I'm adding about a tablespoon of avocado oil just cause that's what was left in this one and that was what I grabbed along with a couple tablespoons of butter. Once that's nice and hot, that oil is going to help our butter not burn up too quickly and so that we can get all of that flavor into our zucchini. Adding our zucchini straight to the pan. I'm sprinkling it with just a pinch of sea salt because we're going to be cooking it with uh, a soy and about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger along with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And then I'm using low sodium soy sauce. You could use liquid aminos, coconut aminos if you don't like cooking with soy sauce. Just dousing that with a couple tablespoons of it and I'm just going to saute this zucchini around for a few minutes minutes until it's nice and brown on the outside, a little soft on the outside, but still a firm enough texture on the inside. Just cook yours to the texture you prefer. Here are our steaks out of the oven from the first go around. I'm gonna split our garlic wasabi paste onto each one, just divide it evenly. And using a silicone basting brush, I'm just going to brush that wasabi oil garlic mixture into our steaks. And then this is kind of seems counterintuitive. <laughs> I'm going to flip them over. So a lot of that garlic is going to get left in our pan, but it's right on top of it cooking through. I'm going to pop these back into the oven to finish up on this side. So we're only applying the wasabi garlic paste to one side of the steaks. Here they are after they are done and come to temperature. Like I said, these are a little thinner than I usually cook, so they're not nice and bloody like I usually like my steaks. But I know some of you out there probably like medium to mid-well steaks, and these on eight minutes in the broiler on each side, just on the second slot from the top, um, is gonna give you that, and here it is just plated with that zucchini. Last up, this beautiful meal is actually my favorite of the week, and it was an accidental meal, so I'm gonna show you the whole process from top to finish, but it ended up being a beef feta and green bean skillets topped with a little tahini sauce that I threw together and some more feta cheese. So to start with in a mini processor, I have some tahini here, which is just sesame paste. You're gonna always wanna stir it up really well as the oil separates. And I'm adding two tablespoons of that to my mixer. And if you want this recipe, let me know in the comments down below and I will write it up for you. But I just threw it together as I went, which is how I do a lot of cooking. <laughs> Added a teaspoon of minced garlic, just shy of a teaspoon lemon juice, a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, about an eighth of a teaspoon smoked paprika, eighth of a teaspoon ground cumin, eighth of a teaspoon sea salt, eighth of a teaspoon ground black pepper. And I am just processing that to see what texture we're at and checking that out. Smells delicious and it's not exactly the texture I want. So I'm adding in a tablespoon of water and checking it again. And at this point I decided, you know what? Maybe I want it to be creamy like a sauce, like a cream sauce. So I added in a tablespoon of sour cream, processed it again, and ta-da! I was happy with this result. Just showing you how we kind of throw things together here in this week's video. You don't have to follow a recipe. Just go with your intuition. Looks good, smells good. We're gonna sit it to the side. And originally we were gonna have feta Greek recipe inspired meatballs. That changed, right? But I'm gonna link that recipe down below that this was inspired by. And as I said before, if you want this recipe written out, let me know and I will work on that for you. But adapted here. I started with a half a pound ground pork, a half a pound ground beef, added two large eggs, two teaspoons, 
tablespoons of minced garlic, added in a fourth of a teaspoon onion powder, a fourth of a teaspoon sea salt, half a teaspoon ground black pepper, and a half a teaspoon red pepper flakes. And these are crushed red pepper flakes, so it still has the seeds in them, so they're nice and spicy. Putting in a half of a cup of chicken broth, reduced sodium, and then getting in there with my hands and mixing this together pretty well before adding in about three fourths of a cup feta cheese. And this is already crumbled, but I am breaking apart the larger pieces. And then we're gonna mix this in too. And the texture of this is gonna be really soft, moist texture. In a large skillet over medium high to high heat, I added in a couple tablespoons of butter. And then I just started dropping in my meatballs and just kinda loosely made them as I was going. And I was gonna sear these nicely and get a crust all the way around and then yada, yada, yada. My toddler, one of my two cats started hollering for me <laughs> and so I wasn't gonna be able to stand over the stove and get a nice crust on these and then do that. So I decided to cut my heat down go ahead and break all of those meatballs apart because they were only half of our meat mixture and we would have had to cook those and then do the other half and scoop all of that to the side. Add in the other half of our meat mixture. This way I could just let it continue browning while I went and dealt with everything that was going on with the heat reduced. And I was gonna make green beans as a side with this recipe anyways. So I said, we'll just go ahead and change it up. And went ahead and added about two cups of frozen long steam green beans right to our skillet, right on top of our meat mixture that we just browned. Put the lid on top on medium heat, maybe 10 minutes tops, and those were steamed where we would like them. I still like mine to be a little firm. Went ahead and tossed this all around so everything was nicely incorporated. And ta-da, that was it. <laughs> so just keeping things real with you around here. Started out inspired by a recipe and it quickly turned to something else. So that's kind of the process on that. Again, if you would like a recipe for the tahini salsa threw together and what ended up being a, a skillet, because I'm going to link the original recipe down below that I was inspired by, which was from Greek Goes Keto. And they've got some interesting recipes on their website. Here it is plated up. Of course, I topped it with a little bit more feta cheese because I love feta and that tahini sauce. This ended up being my favorite meal of the week. Like I wanted all of the leftovers from this. The meat mixture without the tahini sauce on top, just with the extra feta, is nice and spicy. But combined with that tahini, it is excellent. It tastes like something I would have ordered in a restaurant. I absolutely loved it. That's this week's keto dinner ideas. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it gives you a little inspiration to get in the kitchen and try out some new recipes. And even if you mess them up, you can still turn them into something great. Just be like the Bob Ross of keto cooking over here, hopefully. Make sure you come back next week. We're going to be doing our deep fried sides. That was a special request from Joe for some uh, deep fried cauliflower. So come back next Sunday to check that out. Bye, y'all.